Hey, what's up my little tattletales? Listen, the royal girls are fighting and we are loving it, you guys. What is going on? Well, let me just give you the plot. Lord Voldemort, fresh off of his de defeat from the Harry Potter um, Caribbean Islands. Are you guys following this analogy? Okay, fine, I'll get to the point. Lord Voldemort, Prince William, is literally fresh off of his crushing, humiliating defeat in the Caribbean. They said he was sent for a charm offensive. In the words of Omen Scooby, it was all offense, no charm, along with Catherine. And they didn't go through the whole Caribbean. Here's the thing about these idiots. They didn't go where they might have been warmly received. Why? Because they were trying to prove a point. The first point is... Anything Harry can do, I can do better. And then cut the cake. Anything Megan can do, I can do better. Okay, right? So they were trying to one-up Harry and Megan because if you don't know, the last time Harry was dispatched to these certain islands, Harry did fantastic. Why was he dispatched? Because there were rumblings in Jamaica, in Belize, and of course in the Bahamas that they were sick of the Commonwealth. They were sick of colonialism. They were sick of the ties, right? They went there with the first job they've ever had to do. Go and calm them down enough that we can get them to rededicate themselves to the queen, at least in the queen's jubilee year. Can you guys just do that? Yes, 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 we got it. Kate was busy shopping at Top Shop or Jenna Elfman, wherever she shops, right? Jenny Pacman. Kate was busy doing whatever she does. Okay, so... All the pieces weren't into play. William was rubbing like sunscreen on his head with his like Terminator Predator Colin. So those two were set to take over the world. But there was only one problem. There was a tour. Prince Charles had, had scheduled a tour for Ireland. Now, if you guys don't know, royal schedules can never conflict, right? At least this is what they were telling Harry and Meghan, why they were making them sleep in like the Harry, Cutter, Harry Potter cupboard, shoving cheese sandwiches under the door. The reason why they were literally locked in closets and they could not do anything or exist is because royal schedules cannot conflict and you cannot take away energy or attention from the main person. Now, we all know there's a hierarchy. It's the queen, it's Charles, and it's William. Keep this in mind. Prince Charles was supposed to go on his royal tour. However, William and Kate decided to go on their Caribbean tour because one, they didn't care about uh, stealing Charles's shine, which is an issue because Charles is notorious. <coughs> Diana has entered the chat, notorious for hating people taking attention away from him. Are you guys still with me? I'm going somewhere with this, okay? So they went on that tour. They thought they would even outshine him. Instead, they ended up making fools of themselves. Charles is happy. All this stuff is going on. Why is this so important? Besides laughing at William and Kate, which you know is our favorite thing to do. Really quick, just to divulge, I am coming out with another body language analysis. It looks like there's trouble in paradise. Make sure you subscribe. Turn on your notifications for that one. It's going to be good. And also, I'm having a members only live this Friday if you guys are into a American gossip and doing the thing. We're doing Cheaters Lagos editions to get things started off this Friday. Well, why is this important, you ask? Because William came back basically after saying, listen, I was just trying to save these the, the Commonwealth. If you guys don't want my culture and class and esteem, then good luck, right? That's how I read his statement. The issue is, now that he's back, he's gone to war with his father. A lot of people say that they blame Charles for William making a fool of himself. And he believes that had he not listened to Charles, which doesn't make any sense because Charles told you not to go in the first place, that this whole flop tour wouldn't have happened. Now, it is ironic that he is blaming his father for them being told deaf, looking like colonialized. I can't even say the word. It's so offensive. Looking like his ancestors and being very much a not racist family. But look at this new statement that Williams actually said. The girls are fighting. He is literally throwing shots at the next sitting king of England and letting him know that he does not matter. You guys, everybody is waiting to see how Charles how Charles reacts to this because if there's one thing Charles cannot stand or anybody from that point is somebody absurd in their power. Listen to these statements. Okay, so let's read this in a petulant tone, right? William said that he vows to do the Cambridge way. Now we all know the Cambridge way is talking, talking, talking about things they plan to do and never doing them, which in the past wasn't such an issue because there was Harry and Meghan to hate, 
There was Charles and Camilla trying to, like, you know, do a PR campaign uh, to make the people love them. And, of course, there was the queen. But the thing is, I don't know how this is going to work long term because how does the king and queen, if they do become, the, if the monarchy survives or foolishness, how can you literally disguise the fact that you don't do anything? You already have a slimmed down mar monarchy. What else is going on? William says he's adopting a new overarching mantra of urgency plus optimism equals action. Now, I can tell you from this, he is going to fail miserably because this is the worst stupid tagline. They keep talking about they're going to do things the Cambridge way, but unless the Cambridge way is a 40-year-old stuck in a 120-year-old archaic British monarchist, who thinks that it, ooh, look at this. Way to, way to gather the girls, William, and get the youth on your side. Urgent, urgency plus optimism equals action. <laughs> Maybe action equal. You know what? Let's move on. Now, William also credited his grandfather, Prince Philip, Prince Philip, for his new way he's going to approach things. But that doesn't make any sense because they're saying that they are doing less and less work. But Prince Philip, while he focused on a few narrow charities, he worked with hundreds and thousands. Well, okay, fine. He worked with hundreds of charities, but he had his own special pet projects. William and Catherine say that they're going to ignore all these charities and they're only going to have their few pet projects. Again, what are their pet projects? Because they don't work. How do they think this is tenable? He also said, and this is the war, that he is going to reinvent the Prince of Wales role. He's talking about this while the Prince of Wales is still alive and still the Prince of Wales and is his father, right? He says this approach, his approach isn't a criticism of what has come before, but just an acknowledgement of desire to change. It's about hope and optimism for the future. Now, listen, I'm not British, but I will say, and maybe this is all Charles's, Charles's PR thing. He actually seems like he would be a better ruler and king than William. And from what I understand, he was a bit of a visionary where he was literally into, um, what do you call it? Um, uh, uh, he was really into um, biodiversity, helping the earth, helping underserved, and really harvesting and protecting our work, ecological awareness. I know I just made up that word, just go with me. Get this, William also said that he will not take over the Prince's Trust. This is a charity founded by Charles in 1976 in support of vulnerable young people, but will instead concentrate on the Royal Foundation. First of all, the Royal Foundation, to my knowledge, has done nothing except buy out Harry and Meghan. That was the last time I heard about the Royal Foundation doing anything for anybody. Second of all, I understand that you want to stick it to your father because you think your father sabotaged you because you're looking for someone to blame because you sabotaged yourself and that Caribbean trip. But let's be real. How is it being positioned by royalists as a good thing that a charity that has been established in 1976 that as far as I know has helped so many people? You're dissolving it just because you want to stick it to the person that you're now blaming for you being unlikable and nobody wanting you around goes on to take more shots at his fa father saying that William the Duke doesn't like stage manage events when he talks in his speech he wants it to be more natural and credible an event where he is interacting and reacting to people rather than an event designed around him about what he wants to say he doesn't just want to do round table talks about properly getting the grips on the issues there will also be new ways in which to interact with people and become credible and comfortable in five or six core subjects again William, the, you know what? I don't even want to say this because it might actually give Chase and Nafa or whoever's helping him out any tips. Humans don't speak like that. More credible and comfortable, more credible and human like. I am a real boy computer that, first of all, William is. Can I just say that we know how William acts in a credible, comfortable? Should I roll tape on when he invited the, um, when he invited, uh, the, the, the soccer team to Buckingham Palace? Ordered then made jokes about having curry on sterling silver platters and also made jokes about the Uber delivery driver being accosted by Powell security about what are you doing here? Every single time that William is comfortable and every time he comes across as credible, it is him being allegedly <laughs> the R word. Listen, this is my whole point with why we should be happy. Those of us that want to abolish the monarchy, I know I don't live in the UK, but I'm going to give my opinion that William is acting a fool. One, you hear me? William's 
impetuousness, his spoiledness, his childlike narcissistic allegedly behavior is really coming back and biting him. Let's face it. You went out to the Caribbean. You got your butts handed to you. Could you avoided it? Probably by listening to the people on the ground, but you didn't care because you thought you could drown out the little people and go ahead and have your photo up and come back with pretty pictures for the Queen's Jubilee and also stick it to Harry and Meghan. You could have avoided it. You didn't. You literally compounded a mistake by then issuing a statement saying you didn't care about the Commonwealth and who cares if they're even a part of the country of, of uh, the UK empire when you become king matter of, even though you had a sitting monarch and a and your father who's the monarch to be literally in line you literally said that you were taking your toys and going home you threw a temper tantrum you compounded the mistake and now because you're still humiliated and still mad you now want to do press releases on how you're going to burn everything down when you become king <laughs> listen you can't make this up you guys what do you think of this? We are eagerly awaiting Charles's response and clap back because if we saw the way he played Games of Thrones between William and Char uh, William and Harry uh, when Meghan started to get popular. I can't wait to see what else Charles has in his pocket. You guys, keep me posted. Let me know. Turn on your notifications because we're going to be watching this with bells on. Also, be on the lookout for the body language analysis. It's coming.